Tom Salemi from OIS TV. Very happy to have Ludwin Muntz here. He's the president and CEO of Carl Zeiss Meditech. Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. And I was happy to have you on the Masters of the Universe panel um, and kind of just taking away from those conversations to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with you folks. Can you tell me a bit about Carl Zeiss? How much of that is ophthalmology? It's a very large part, right? Well, it's the largest part of Carl Zeiss Meditech. Um, it's between um, two thirds and 70%, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it makes up a, a majority. And in fact, it's the part that has grown the most over the last years. Oh. Is that is that due to internal efforts to grow that business or, or external growth of the industry itself? Um, well, I, we have a different strategic positioning in, in ophthalmology. So in ophthalmology, we basically uh, try to provide everything needed for diagnosis and treatment. Right? So it's a really a very broad um, portfolio. We've entered new segments, which we didn't have in the past, and that has given us um, a growth. These segments, which I'm talking about uh, in particular, are um, IOLs, right, mm -hmm. cataract. We don't have them here in the U.S., but outside the U.S., that's a very substantial and important part of our business. And you, you took charge of the ophthalmic division about 10 years ago, right, in 2007? Yeah, the, the, um, uh, we basically uh, structure our company in, in three parts. We have what we call microsurgery, that is business um, focused on uh, neurosurgery, ENT surgery, um, dental and others. Um, and then we have two divisions in ophthalmology. One is um, basically the diagnostics and the other is everything um, on a surgical. And within surgical we have refractive and we have um, uh, well, cataract and retina surgery. How have you seen the ophthalmology sector change over those nine years since you led that, started leading that group? Well, the, the, um, the industry certainly has changed. So if you look at the competitive landscape, um, the largest players now um, are owned by pharmaceutical companies, which was not the case mm. um, uh, 10 years ago. Um, and um, at the same time, we've seen many small uh, innovation companies come up, right? So I, I believe the, the speed of innovation really um, has picked up in, uh, in ophthalmology. So these are the, the external things that have changed. Um, if I look at my company, um, as I said, our um, entry of the cataract market really has uh, changed weights within um, Carl Zeiss Meditech and has made that a more important part of our overall business. How do you look at those smaller companies? Are you acquiring startups? Are you bringing their technology inside? Uh, or do you lean more heavily on internal R&D? Um, well, we do both, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I believe um, the, the sources of, um, of innovation um, uh, are manifold. Um, it, it really starts um, um, at working with um, surgeons, working with ophthalmologists, um, they are a great source of, of innovation, right? Um, then, of course, it's uh, looking at um, the, the very innovative um, uh, startup companies, at least sometimes very innovative startup companies. That's another great source. We work with um, research institutes, universities, um, to, to really um, be at the forefront of new technology development. And, of course, in-house, we also have um, uh, a lot of knowledge and um, uh, a lot of IP which we can use for further developing our uh, technologies and products. At an earlier uh, Masters Universe session, I think it was last year, you had mentioned that Zeiss has a long history, of course, in, in medical tech. It's been around 170 years, is that right? In, well, in med tech, 100 years? Correct, 170 years of all Zeiss. Is, that, is having that history, that legacy, uh, how is that help and, and is it ever a, a hindrance? Well, um, first of all, it helps because um, uh, we have an incredible technology base in-house, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Zeiss, um, the, the Zeiss Group not only has a medical business, um, there are uh, other businesses in uh, very um, different and, and various um, fields. Um, and all this technology is, um, you know, it's transparent and available throughout the, the Zeiss Group. And um, the medical business really benefits from that technology base. Now, within ophthalmology, um, the 100-year the history we have has resulted in a long series of um, really innovative products, firsts like the, the slit lamp, mm -hmm. um, the, the um, OCT, um, the optical biometry, um, now more, more recently 
um, the um, uh, SMILE procedure for refractive surgery, the surgical microscope was invented by SAIS. So it's really a long history. And um, what that has done is not only that uh, within the company we have a lot of um, application knowledge and expertise in, in these fields, um, in the market, it has made uh, Zeiss really um, well known to everybody in, in ophthalmology. So it, it's a very strong brand. And that is something we can uh, really build on. And within ophthalmology going forward, what you mentioned some of the areas you've expanded into recently. What, what other areas of interest are there for Zeiss and in what direction do you see the company going? Well, within uh, ophthalmology, as I said, uh, we, uh, we've entered cataract. Uh, yep. We are not present in cataract globally, so that's certainly a direction. Um, uh, and furthermore, I believe there's lots of um, potential to further improve um, the, the product and product categories we're in today. Um, uh, just here on the, uh, on the panel of the conference, we were um, talking about the, the premium channel and uh, refractive outcomes. Um, innovation really can help to improve um, uh, refractive outcomes of cataract surgery. That's mm -hmm. an important need. And um, it's so much um, the um, uh, device makers uh, can contribute to making that happen, and size is here at the forefront. So my expectation is that um, size will continue to, um, uh, to develop such technologies and drive outcomes in ophthalmology. And do you see being in, in Europe as, as a benefit? So many medical technologies obviously build a strong base there before going to the U.S. and other markets. Does it help to be Europe-centric and to, to, to have that, that base there to sort of be on, have your feet on the ground in, in those, uh, those markets where these technologies tend to take off? Well, first of all, our um, approach is a global approach, sure. right? So we want to be um, present globally. We believe that um, the U.S., of course, it's the largest single market in the world. Um, so we, uh, we really need to have and want to have a, a strong presence here because there's so much knowledge, there's so much out here in the market that helps us to, to develop these, um, these innovations. But it's just because of the regulatory environment that um, innovations tend to be released first to the market in Europe. Right? And um, of course, it, it helps to have a, a strong presence there. And then uh, we typically start to, um, to register um, our products here with a, a CE mark, and then later on um, apply for FDA approval and come here to the US. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, thank you for taking some time today to, uh, to join us and to, to share your story. It's a pleasure.